All right, Simon, what's next? All right. Commencing test here. No, 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 no. Okay, let's just, uh, we'll put that one on the back burner. How'd the, how'd the test print come out for the Flash Forge? Oh, yeah. That's looking really good. I think this one's about ready for review. What? Oh, main screen turn on. Yes. I would love to test your 3D printer. What do you mean, how am I going to do that? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, but I mean, I'm, I'm almost wrapped up with these ones. I, I can handle it. I'll get to it. Okay, you know, you know what? Watch this. Hello? Liam! Buddy, how are you doing, you 3D printing leprechaun? Oh, hi Joe, how are you? I could actually use your help for something. Would you be willing to review a 3D printer for me? Okay. It's the Longer LK-1. It's a large format 3D printer, easy assemble, nice touchscreen interface, but not a lot of bells and whistles. Still, retails for only about $280, $250 US. Sure, yeah, send it on. I'll, take, I'll, I'll do that for you, no problem. Thanks, man. You are a lifesaver. I look forward to seeing what you got to say about this printer. All right. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye. More work ahead. There. The Longer LK-1 is a large format 3D printer, a little bit like a CR-10, but with an improved user interface and at a slightly better price. Now, I've reviewed a printer from Longer before, and it seems to me a lot like Longer's business strategy is Creality, but a little bit better specs on paper and a little bit better of a price, which is great things. However, I found with the previous Longer printer that I used that it was a little bit more fiddly to use as well. The, the bed went out of calibration a lot. It was difficult to use that machine and, and it was so frustrating that in the end I just kind of stopped using it in favor of other printers that were easier to use and I can't help but wonder if this is going to be a little bit the same with the LK1. And as much as I wanted to get my hands on this machine myself, it was a very busy time for me when Longer approached me to review their printer and so I enlisted the help of my friend Liam at the YouTube channel Astroprint to check this printer over for me and give me his thoughts on it. So let's just pull Liam up. There you go. Hey, Liam, thank you so much for doing this for me. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start at the very beginning. I hear that's a very good place to start. How did the unboxing go? The unboxing went well. Um, it was well packed. Everything was easy to, to, to get access to. There was nothing rattling around in the box. Um, so it, it unpacked pretty easy. Um, I don't see any issues with, the, with, with, the, with that. And the assembly went pretty easy as well. Um, it's based, there was one or two little things I think uh, that, that's kind of surprised. They actually had bolts in here and on this axis to actually st during, to stop it from moving when shipping. And that kind of got in the way with, during the assembly because you had, to, you had no flexure on these uh, V-rails. So uh, you have to undo those first, move your X axis, your move your X axis gantry all the way to the top, all the way up, out of the way. So you had some flexure in these when you're trying to get the bolts in underneath. But other than that, assembly went pretty easy. Uh, the one thing I will say, uh, when I first um, assembled it and powered it up, the X axis would not would actually not go over and fully home. And what I found was the belt underneath had a little bit too much material on it, and I had to snip it off 
because it was actually interfering with the x-axis moving all the way over to towards the idler. So uh, QA was okay, but not perfect. But that was something small. Now, one thing that I always look for is the instructions to make sure that a new user who's never used a 3D printer before is going to be able to find what they need to be able to use this printer well. Were the instructions easy to find? Instructions were planted right on top of the box. They're easy to find. Um, they're... Their, language, their English is not bad. Uh, it's mostly in decent, decent English. So understanding is okay. Uh, they had pretty good diagrams, especially of their menu system. I will say that some of their images are a little on the dark side. So it's a bit hard to see and understand where some of the stuff goes, but it's not too hard to figure out. Anyone with any mechanical aptitude would easily sort it out, easily understand. Cool, cool. Those actually look like pretty decent instructions, I gotta say. Now, what else was in the box? Do you remember? Well, it came with the obligatory level cutters, the uh, USB cable to attach it to your printer or to uh, an Octopi or whatever you're using. Uh, it did come with a spare uh, filament runout sensor, which is kind of unusual. The filament runout sensor sits up here, and it did come with an extra one, so maybe there's a known issue of them getting damaged in shipping, I'm not sure. And you obviously got your obligatory uh, hex wrenches, your standard wrench, some zip ties to tidy up the cabling, and your uh, needle for cleaning your nozzle. Okay. Hey, how's that fancy touchscreen interface working for you? Does it work good? Is the menu well laid out? The touchscreen is actually nice, and I'm not a big fan of touchscreen. Some of the advanced features that would not normally be on a touchscreen, you can go in and edit them. You, you can go in and edit your VREFs and so on in the touchscreen, which most printers with touchscreens don't have that available. So I kind of like that. You know, I noticed just looking at the pictures of this machine that it was yet another large format 3D printer that's balancing its entire build volume on a single extrusion Y movement that it just clamps to on the side, balancing it like a tightrope walker. Did that cause you any problems? Was that, was that okay for you? No, I, I think the size of the bed being 300 by 300 is not a problem. Um, and I like its overall size, like 300 by 300 by 400 is actually quite nice build area. Uh, I will say that the, you want, when you do get it, check your bed because mine rocked. And that's because the concentric nuts in the, under the base, under the bed, had to be adjusted to make sure they were touching the V-rail. Because if you don't touch the V-rail, you will get a bit of a rock on it. And it was rocking. Uh, so there's a few, obviously, tightening and checking that you have to do as part of setup. But you, that should be done with any printer, I think. And then I assume that you ran the test prints that were on the SD card, yeah? I, went, I actually ran two tests from the SD card. I didn't run them all because what they give you in, and I never included this, what they give you in the box is this piece of filament. And to be honest, this piece of filament is pointless. Like they give you parts that need to be printed that are larger parts. You can't print it with what you get in the box. Uh, I did print a small square and it, the dimensions were pretty good. It came out nice and clean as a print. But printing this, which came also came on the SD card, um, you wouldn't have enough filament to print this with what they give you. Uh, and you, there is a bit of layer lining, but you get expect a small bit of, with, some, with, a, with a budget printer, you expect to be, do some tweaking. But the overall print quality came out okay. Bit of over extrusion, but all in all, it was, it was quite good. Hey, that's Turnip. I keep seeing him in 3D printers from China. They, they absolutely love that character. He's kind of their version of Groot, I think. But that's cool, that's cool. So. The next step, of course, once you've printed the ones on the SD card, is to make prints yourself that you want to do. And how did that go? What did the instructions say that a new user should do for setting up the slicer? Um, the instructions didn't give a lot of information on that. What they do was they give, they'd give you the instructions on setting up your printer, which in a slicer, which is basically giving you the, the slicer dimensions and so on, which is here at the bottom of the instructions. And it did, they obviously did show you the change of voltage and so on, but they tell you about how to set up your slicer. But after that, they didn't give you a lot of information, um, which a lot of printers don't do anyway. They don't go into too much detail with that. Uh, but setting it up was easy, and a lot of people on the, on the, the web or 
depending on the browser you, or the slicer you choose, you'll go out, you choose the, your browser, you do a bit of research on how it's set up, how to set up printers on it. There's, there's normally lots of instructions out there on how to do that. So I don't think it's a big issue. Um, somebody would probably get lost on, if they opened, opened the box on Christmas morning and they want to set up a printer. Uh, but the instructions are basic enough. At least they put you in the right direction. And after that, you spend your time on YouTube or, or wherever and figure out how it's done. Wow, that's definitely interesting and something that I'm going to have to note in the spreadsheet. But it, it seems like they're capable instructions, and I like that they're open-ended for whatever slicer that you want to use. How is the print quality overall, would you say? Print quality is not bad. Um, again, for a budget printer, it's not bad. Um, these came out okay. These are the two parts that actually came on the SD card. They came out okay. This had a bit of lining on it, but not, nothing major that I would worry about. No layer shifting or anything. Um, I did print your printer blocks, and the first time I printed them, nothing would fit together. And, and it was because the printer over extrudes a little bit. And when you check the dimensional accuracy of it, of the one that printed, it's a little bit over 16 millimeters. So it's a little bit large. So I dropped the extrusion to 99%. And when I dropped the extrusion down to 99%, I, I can actually get it down to 16 millimeters. And the parts do actually go together. So that was a success. And I also did a larger version of the printer block, which actually works also, uh, again, with less extrusion. And I like to do vase modes. Vase modes, if you can do, I think if you can do a really good quality print with a single wall, you're doing well. So I did a vase mode rocket. As you know, I'm into astronomy, so I did a vase mode rocket. It came out pretty nice. Even the text on the fins actually came out really, really well. And obviously, I went through it, and I put it through a stress test to see how it, how it would hold up. And it did okay on the print surface, on the, the print text here. Um, the dimensions of the squares and the circles was, was pretty good. Uh, the same as these cylinders, and overhangs was quite nice. And the stringing between these, there's a little bit of string, but it's not too much, and that can be sorted out with a bit of, um, bit of tweaking on, on your, uh, your settings. Was the surface text did not come out super clear. But it did a, a decent enough job, I think. So overall, looking at this printer, do you think that this is the sort of printer that you'd recommend to a friend who wanted to get into 3D printing? To a friend who, to a friend, I would have no problem recommending it. Uh, to a beginner, I'd be a little hesitant because if they don't have someone around them to help them guide them, because there are a few things I came across. If they've done the research and they know they should tighten everything up, they should be okay. Awesome, Liam. Thank you. You've given me some great information. And before we wrap this up, is there anything else you'd like to say about this before we go? Um, there's a few things that I think I would change on a printer if I had my way. Um, the, the bed is, coated, is a glass bed coated with PVC. I really dislike these. I don't like the PVC bed. I'd rather it just be either be glass or be flex steel or something something like that. But PVC coating on glass, I'm not a big fan of. Um, also, this cooling fan, I think is insufficient. Uh, it's just a standard fan with a with a directional duct underneath it. This is directed above, slightly above the nozzle. It's actually going to cause some um, heat issues on the nozzle. So I'm not too, a big fan of that. The plastic covering, this plastic. Hard plastic covering on the cabling, this is cumbersome, in my opinion. One of the first things I would do if this was my printer is replace this with the mesh that um, some of the other manufacturers use. It's a lot tidier, it's a lot easier to use, and it's easier to manipulate to tidy your cables. We need support on the back, uh, on the heated bed connector cable. There's no support there. This is a bit flimsy. Over time, these cables will work harder than break. Because as the table moves, that cable is being pulled and dragged, and it will cause problems there. And the cables are a little short. What comes out of these connectors are a little tight. There's not an awful lot of slack on them, so you're kind of stretching them to get, make your multiple connections on the cable. It's okay, and you can do it. It's just a little bit more play on those cables would probably be a little bit better, in my opinion. Well... Thank you again very much, Liam, and I hope that you enjoy the LK1 and that it works great for you going forward. We'll talk to you later, man. Well, thank you for having me, Joe. It's been fun.
I appreciate Liam's thoughts on this. I hope that it has given you something to think about if you're considering this machine. And if you would like to see more of Liam's review on this one, he's going to be uploading to his channel a longer video where he talks more about his experience with this machine. So if you really want to dive into Liam's thoughts on that, I'll put a link both in the cards and in the description and probably in the end cards. You can find Liam's video all over this one. And again, big thanks to Liam for reviewing this printer for me. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. That was a good one. Which audio are we going to go with? I don't know.